Do you think journalism is failing America? Mm, a little bit, but I also think America is failing journalism. I think that they're very reciprocal. Like they feed back into each other. And the type of journalism we have today is very much a response to the type of things that Americans want to see. And I think we all kind of have to do a little bit better in moving towards a more responsible future. So who's it up to first? Um, I would argue the journalists. It's up to the – so we should set higher standards for journalists? Well, when you say we should set higher standards for journalists, that makes it sound like the people need to move first because we're setting the standards, oh, you're right? right? you're right, you're right. Yeah. So you'd say it's the government needs to set higher standards for journalists. Um, no, journalists need to set higher standards for journalists, I think. But why would they do that when they're financially incentivized otherwise? I know, it's a hard one, right? So how do you But why would the people do it not? when the people like watching people screaming at each know, other and being the most part the of the problem? That is the problem. So they feed back in. That's what I mean when I say feed back into each other. Because that financial incentive is the feedback mechanism. And then for consumers, it's the consumption mm -hmm. uh, lever that's their feedback mechanism. So they're going to watch the things that are entertaining them the most. And journalists are going to produce the things that entertain them the most. And then you're stuck in this horrible world. That's the tough yeah. part. It's like you don't want to restrict them, but you do want to somehow incentivize them to angle a little bit more towards truth no, rather than... It's human nature, though. That's why the news is so negative all the time is, is that's, what, that's what keeps people watching. Mm -hmm. And we've even realized it on my main channel of just like negative titles get twice to three times the viewership than a positive title mm -hmm. consistently. And it's one of those things where like, do you want to make a positive title that a third of the people watch? Or you make the same video, the same message with a negative headline, people watch it and take away the message. We were even talking about this earlier with um, a podcast title. Do we say the five things you could do to get rich or the five things you could do not to be poor? The poor title, like this, it's the same video, but the negative connotation does better. And so from a journalistic point of view, it's like the negative is going to get more attention. People are more likely to click it. There's no reason for them to change that. Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one. I wonder sometimes, yeah, I don't know. I, this idea just popped in my head, so yeah. I might completely two days from now think it's the dumbest thing in the world. Sure. But I wonder if people are drawn to the negative stuff because their actual real life is actually pretty decent, even though people don't realize it. So you're like drawn to the negative stuff because it stands out more. Like, do I want to turn on the TV and watch like some happy, normal, ordinary story if like my life is like kind of boring or whatever? Or do I want to see like some exceptionally crazy shit? Because I'm thinking like if you take people in like really exceptionally fucked circumstances, like would they be listening to negative stuff all the would. time? I Do you think, think they, they would? would? Because I, I feel like yeah. when I think of the people that have the most engagement with politics in a negative way where it's really driving them crazy, I'm usually thinking of like middle class kids who are like their life is fine. I'm like, why the fuck? If this stuff makes you so miserable, why are you fighting about this all the there time? Was, there was something but, I saw mm, it, yeah. of like the fear of loss versus the pursuit of gain. And someone fears losing one dollar way more than they would pursue getting two dollars there's a lot of like the ratios are like yeah the ratios this, are yeah. so skewed towards like i'd rather not risk this little bit than have all of this upside yeah and my understanding is that all of that was really designed to keep us alive like we have to be on edge because what if a lion comes out and like kills you or you do that one thing like it, it's more worth it to try to stay alive than it is to try to you know, we had a psychiatrist you. on the podcast who also did crisis negotiation, mm -hmm. and he said the reason why we're so fearful of negative things happening is because it's been coded into our genetics, into our DNA. Whereas back in the day, like Graham said, if you weren't fully perceptive of all of the negative things like eating a certain bad fruit or like going into a certain bad part of the jungle where a lion could attack you, like that was the end of it. That was the end of your entire family tree, end of spreading your, your genetics, end of your entire life, end of everything. Mm -hmm. um, and we're so used to that, that like kind of scared mentality, the scarcity that has just kind of like stayed with us, even though we don't really have any of those like super violent threats. Yeah. It's still way more important when you're walking through a dark alleyway these days to think somebody's going to come and get you um, rather than to just be completely oblivious of negative things that could happen because that's the end of everything. Yeah, very little margin of error when it comes to your safety. Mm -hmm. or yeah, your possible, life. Yeah. Yeah. So One thing I, yeah. that I absolutely despise about journalism is they can make certain claims about people. And then these claims, these alleged claims, they turn out to be false. Mm -hmm. And then they don't make content that would say, oh, sorry, guys, I made this like claim about this person. It kind of ruined their, their life, but it turns out it's not false. And I'm sorry, I'll do better in the future. That just never happens. For example, this is a personal example, but it... It happened to my favorite artist in the entire world. His name's Rex Orange County. So he had a bunch of articles made about him doing alleged sexual assault. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was in all of his like fan groups and everything. And everyone was saying, I will never forgive him, even if he ends up being not guilty, because this is just such a disgusting thing. Right. Okay. So he is incurring actual financial damage, uh, reputation damage. 
measurable damages to his life because of all of these articles that came out. Turns out CCTV footage came out, proved him innocent, like actual irrefutable evidence. All the charges got dropped and nobody made any content whatsoever saying that he was innocent. Mm -hmm. And now I still feel to this day when I meet people and they ask me about my music taste and I say, oh, I love Rex Orange County. They always say, oh yeah, but what do you think about that thing? It's like they all know about the alleged infraction, but nobody knows about when he was actually absolved from it. Yeah, that's definitely a problem. Even, even if people did publish retractions, the retractions always get way less coverage than the original claims. There was something that I saw on uh, Twitter, and it was this huge follow-up of this, I think she was like a congresswoman or something, that said she was sexually assaulted in like uh, the train station. And she pointed to the guy, and they caught the guy, uh, and all these headlines went out about him. I was trying to just find his name. And then they pulled up the CCTV, uh, CCTV footage afterwards. And the guy just was on his phone, accidentally like, kind of bumped into her like this and kept walking. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And then no one really reported on it. But they later found out how ridiculous this was. And then they posted it calling out this Congress. It was, maybe she wasn't a Congress. And she probably didn't suffer that much. No, she didn't. How but, much this no, guy but, but this guy, I believe, like lost his job. He was targeted. People like were sending him death threats. They were trying to track him down. And like, the same all thing this... happened to Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse had several death threats. And like you said, assuming mm -hmm. your take on the Kyle Rittenhouse case is correct, and he was doing completely fine thing, not in the wrong in any capacity, mm -hmm. but he suffered horribly. Yeah, because of this thing and hardly any media, well, at least on the left, more so on the, uh, the mm -hmm. right does it, um, covers it. Yeah, I mean, that's bad. Of course, I agree. Um, a lot of the coverage of those stories are really bad. The, one of the most fucked ones that I thought was funny was the um, bird watcher, the Central Park. I think it was in Central Park, the bird watcher guy mm -mm. who ran into the woman with the dog and she called 911 on him. Mm -mm. Oh, fuck. Never mind. No, Wait a second. I remember it. this. Yeah, it was, it was a, big. That guy has a TV show now, I think, on like the Discovery Channel. He, his whole life got made for that. And that woman's life got destroyed. But basically, I think there's a recording of, um, I don't want to get the quoting on this wrong, especially because we're talking about misreporting. But there's, yeah. a, there's like a video of him on his cell phone. And she's saying something like, uh, like, hi, 911, like, there's a guy here, uh, uh, there's a black man here, and he's threatening me, and something like that. I don't remember if she says something like, uh, like, oh, like, you're a black guy, like, the cops are going to get you. I don't know if it was something specifically like that, or if it was just her saying, like, there's a black man here, and he's like, oh, you're being racist, and blah, blah, blah. And he published that video uh, and online, and her life was destroyed, and obviously everybody said he was a hero who endured this horrible Karen white woman in the park, blah, blah, blah. But... When you go back and you look at the actual Facebook post that, that the black guy had made on his Facebook, now I'm not trying to say that the woman was necessarily in the right for calling the cops, but on the guy's own Facebook, he said that he had brought doggy treats because this woman was bringing her dog to the park and he thought that the dog needed to be on a leash or something. And he brought doggy treats and he was going to try to lure the dog away from her so that he could like take the dog or something. And in that light i'm like okay well i kind of oh. understand if he's threatening to do this because then he also threatened like i'm gonna get your dog and blah 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 that she would call mm. 911 now because she's worried or whatever it, it paints that story in a way different light yeah. but um yeah there's a lot of random stories where you get like half the i mean you brought up kyle rittenhouse all of kyle rittenhouse happened because of the riots that happened in kenosha which was in response to like that 14 second twitter video clip of jacob blake do you remember that Black guy goes into a car with a cop behind him and he shoots him in the back like seven times and it looks horrible. And But the entirety of that was two or three cops were wrestling with this guy to try to not get him to go in the car that had like the two children of a woman that this guy had previously sexually assaulted. Uh, and the cops were trying to get him to not drive off with the kids in the car. So when the full story came out, in my opinion, the police officers were completely exonerated. Maybe you, they should have tried harder to take him down before him getting in the car or whatever. But initially, it looked like just some black dude trying to get in a car where the cops were bowling him and they shot him in the back for like seven times for no reason right did anything happen to the police officers um i don't remember what the follow-up for them was but i know the kenosha riots were in response to that video the jacob blake video the problem with stuff like this is that you're financially incentivized to trigger negative emotions in people about us a, a given enemy yeah you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it just lines your pockets more the worse you make them yep. seem cops immigrants black people conservatives liberals yeah for me i don't like the fact that they could make all these alleged claims but almost state them as though they're a fact yep like there are some of these things where i read them and it's like you know, this person took this person into the thing, beat them, and did this and this and this. And then at the end, it's like, allegedly, according mm -hmm. to the complaint or whatever it might be. And it just, it makes it sound like, oh, they're stating this is a fact and this is true. I feel like for media, they're generally, well, they'll always say allegedly if, that, if that's the case. But for we Twitter and no stuff, comment, you know. for Twitter and stuff, it'll be, I, like, I always tell people, like, 
if you see a 12 second video, you should always be wondering why it's a 12 second video. We mm -hmm. all have cell phones. We've got CCTV footage. Like if you're seeing 12 seconds of video footage, it's because somebody very specifically wants you to see only 12 seconds of video footage. That should say something to you, you know?